So there was a couple of um, kind of more general gene editing topics I wanted to cover. So one of them was, so you founded uh, Nebula Genomics as yes. a way to put DNA sequencing on a blockchain, right? Right. So, so I, which I think is, is really exciting in, in, in a way to share, uh, I guess, gene data or DNA data in a, uh, right. in a secure way. But um, so can you talk about the benefits of getting a detailed DNA analysis? And is that something that just ordinary people can get? Right, because I've I've had my DNA done, but you know it was with one of the commercial ones, and it was like, you know, not so detailed. So first of all, the, the Nebula Genomics uses more than just blockchain. Blockchain is a way of mm. having a public ledger that tells what transactions have occurred, so you can tell mm. uh, that it's been maintained in a private way if you want, or in a, a certain controlled public way if you want to share it with your physician or with a scientist. Mm. But in addition to blockchain, we have homomorphic encryption as a tool, which allows you to ask a question of something that's encrypted without decrypting it. So rather, mm. it does you no good if you have an encrypted genome, if you have to decrypt it in order to, to do anything with it, because in its decrypted state, it becomes uh, fragile and accessible to hacking and so forth. So we keep it in an encrypted form. Okay, yep. so that's, that's, that's the context. Then right. your, your, your big question though is, why do it at all? Why bother uh, mm -hmm. with all this amazing genomic and, and computer uh, security uh, methodology? So uh, I think the best way, so you can make, some people make some claims about how it, it's gonna help you on an everyday basis. It's gonna be, you know, like Google Maps or something, you whip <laughs> it out every day. Uh, I think a, a better way of thinking about it than that is that it's, it's more like seat belts. It's not necessarily going to help you every day or any day. And you, make it, you might make it through your entire life without needing your genome, but do you feel lucky is the question. So um, you still buckle up, or you should, uh, because you have like a 1% chance of, of uh, dying or, or serious um, dis disablement. Mm. Um, and the same thing with this is you have a, a one to three percent chance of having an adult onset disease, which which you could treat, um, which ha uh, which could extend your quality adjusted life years by you know, 20, 30 years. And maybe you'll see your grandchildren, and your great grandchildren that you otherwise wouldn't. That you also have a similar percentage, one to five percent that you will have um, a child that will be severely damaged from birth uh, and, and will die relatively young and with a great deal of pain, suffering, and economic uh, impact uh, uh, negative uh, for your whole family. And, and so, so both of those are avoidable in, in a very low-cost, non-invasive way. So you don't necessarily have to have a therapy you just, um, in one case, it's genetic counseling um, for the next generation. And in the case of the adult onset, those, those probably are therapies, although in some cases it's lifestyle adjustments. But the point is, it's not everybody, it's not, a, it's, but you don't know whether it's you or not until you get it done. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's worth doing. It's, it's dirt cheap now. I mean, we brought it down from $3 billion to $300. Um, if you can't afford three hundred dollars to get with on the chance of getting an extra thirty years of life or a healthy family, um, I don't know where, where your priorities are exactly. But uh, I re respect them, but uh, I don't identify with them. Right, and and Nebula Genomics will do the will do the analysis as well. And that's right. They, they do. An, it's, it's interpreted, and it's uh, the the. Um, Sequencing is done under CLAP, CLIA. Um, is, these are bureaucratic terms for uh, well-monitored uh, uh, um, uh, diagnostics. Right. And, and they provide the, the, like the kind of review of the data. And they, will, they will do interpretation. Uh, if you want a genetic counselor, uh, they, you know, they'll help you find genetic counselors, but they right. don't technically uh, deliberate. For most people, they're, 
the, the, the news is uh, you don't need, uh, you probably don't need a genetic counselor, uh, although it'd right. be, you know, it's not a bad idea for everybody to have, to have a, at least one interaction with a genetic counselor in their life, ideally preconception before they having uh, children. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, that would be, that, that's definitely interesting. Um, so you did, kind of changing a little bit, so you did start the Human Genome Right Project. And I, I think maybe not going into too much detail on that, but one thing I think you said about it was you would be able to cr have humans who are immune to viruses. Does that sound right? So, I mean, is that something that we can kind of ret retrofit on humans? <laughs> can we do it epigenetically and make humans immune to viruses? Because in the current environment, that would be helpful. Right. I mean, certainly we are in a moment in our history, a unique moment where we are both technologically advanced and have had a bad experience with viruses uh, in certain people's estimate, a botched experiment experience with viruses. Uh, uh, so I was involved in, in the, the very beginning, starting of the Genome Project Read in 1984 and write in around 2016. And, uh, and writing can either mean synthesis from scratch or it can mean a high level of editing. So, so much editing, it's as if you wrote it from scratch. Uh, and, that, and we've done that. We've shown that we can make uh, an organism uh, com com uh, resistant to multiple, almost all viruses, like 90% of the different viral types. And we can do that by changing one of the 64 triplet codons uh, throughout the mm -hmm. genome. So every, every instance of this codon is changed to a synonym. Um, so that way you can remove the essential gene that normally service that codon, that triplet UAG, and you can get rid of that because the host doesn't need it anymore, but the virus still needs it. So the virus is usually broken in multiple ways, so it can't even evolve around it. Um, and we think this is a completely general strategy. We've shown it for one organism. We think it will work in every organism, making any organism you want resistant to all viruses, all naturally occurring viruses, even those you haven't uh, seen before, haven't studied, because they all have in common that they use the host genetic code um, it's almost a universal code, but certainly host, uh, the host genetic code, um, they don't bring it with them. So uh, now whether that, what's that impact on humans? Now it's easy to, to imagine, you know, multivirus resistant or all virus resistant plants, animals, uh, industrial microorganisms, all of which have viral problems. Um, for humans, we, we're, we're making, uh, multivirus resist, we're, we're using this recoding strategy on human stem cells so we can make any cell type, including cells used in manufacturing. So there have been cases where there have been huge virus problems in manufacturing of, uh, of human pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, proteins, antibodies, hormones, so forth. Um, but we also are making them so, uh, so that we can do replacement uh, so cell therapies and, and transplants and replacements so that in principle, if let's say we replace the hematopoietic stem cells, then every, all of your uh, blood cell types would be resistant to all viruses. So this would be B cells, T cells, macrophages, NK cells, all these things would be resistant to all viruses, which is handy because uh, you want your immune system in particular to be resistant. When, so when your immune system gets compromised by a virus like HIV, then it all, you know, everything else um, breaks loose. Or, you know, measles uh, is particularly bad virus because it makes you immune compromised with respect to every other virus. So, uh, you know, very often you'll, um, one <clears throat> infection like measles or HIV will make you susceptible so you die of something else. So mm. if you make your, if you strengthen your immune system in that way, that, that, that could be something that could be a preventative strategy. The way to deliver, unfortunately, to deliver it to every cell in your body, to make every cell virus resistant the way you would for an animal or a plant, uh, you need to go through the germline, and that's not currently approved. But it is by far the best way of getting it to every cell in the body. It is, it is also a good way of getting equitable distribution because all subsequent generations get it for free. Um, but um, anyway, uh, there are many things to 
that we need to do in order to increase our confidence that, that we are ready to do that sort of thing, which we're not right now. Um, but in the meantime, there's plenty we can do in adults. And since most of us are adults anyway, there's a much bigger market for aging reversal and for virus resistance. Um, and so it behooves us to, to figure out how to get a delivery of, of uh, cell therapies and gene therapies uh, to, to be better. Right, we, yes. We are, we're making huge progress on, on both gene and cell therapies. Yeah, yes. Yeah, you, we, uh, yes, talking to you, we, 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 it's, it, 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 uh, it's very kind of optimistic, very encouraging. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.